Hey friends, today we are going to talk about network protocols. In particular, we are going to talk about how the combination of Rust and web transport will potentially like, help us to reimagine and rebuild from scratch our video streaming platforms. My name is Dario Lencina, Sky invited me, so dude, it's your fault if I messed up. I will also show you some things I built with web transport, like this video teleconferencing system that I used to talk with my mom in Mexico, and also this RC car that streams video encoded in VP9 through a 5G connection to the same servers that I use for the teleconferencing system. And by the way, I think I have two cameras. Boom, let's remove the cap. There you go. Two cameras, my friends. <laughs> Today is a beautiful day. Let's go out in a hike and I'll tell you about how I got involved with real-time video. Back on 2017, GM acquired Cruise Automation. I signed up as soon as possible to be able to help these guys. So just to put you in context, Cruise Automation was a small company. I know that they had less than 150 employees when I joined to help them. And what I helped them with is Teleassist. So Teleassist is this system that allows a human to intervene in some scenarios to assist the vehicle with some complex maneuvers. So like in this case, we have construction. Do you see this construction here? I use WebRTC, it was awesome. I fell in love with real-time video, with audio processing, with real-time streaming, I became obsessed with low latency. It came to the point where the only way for me to continue working at Cruise was to move to San Francisco. And that's when I said, no, I wouldn't give up this stuff. I know that the Bay Area has its own beautiful spots, but the reality is that I love, I love Michigan. Yeah, so I saw this community post by Let's, Let's Get Rusty. He was asking like which project community wanted to to build, his community wanted to build. One of the options was a uh, Zoom clone. So, you know, I was already doing all this video stuff. So I, I figured that this will be a perfect match for me. As I was trying to find the technology stack, I found that the Chrome team was working directly with the Zoom team to bring the Zoom application to the browser. Today, I want to talk to you about the explorations that we've been doing with the Zoom team over the past few months and some of the specific advanced APIs that we've been exploring together. And they were going to accomplish that using web transport. I didn't know about web transport. I was intrigued. So the next API I want to get into is web transport, which is a next generation networking API for client to server communication. Let's look at the definition of web transport. Web transport provides bi-directional transport through both unreliable datagrams and reliable streams based mechanisms. Zoom being like a super mainstream product and a very good product, by the way, very good product, I, I have to say. I figured that they were up to something with their web transport stuff. Web transport is built on top of the quick protocol. So I needed to take a step back and learn that protocol first. Google it a little bit more and found out that it is uh, a new transport protocol built on top of UDP. So they really, really wanted to create a new protocol from scratch. When you create a new protocol, it's kind of a problem. Now, good luck trying to route all those packets through public networks because the routers and switches around the world need to know about your protocol to be able to route it. So it was just easier to build it on, on UDP and the get adoption, like that will probably take decades. So that's quick. It's a new protocol built on UDP. It gives you some of the same warranties than TCP, but here's, here's what separates this protocol from everyone else. It's a multiplex channel, basically. So it allows you to create individual streams within the same connection. So for those of us that messed around with WebSockets back in the day, you know, one of the biggest problems of WebSockets is that they were working great. So you were streaming your data through them and then they'll freeze. <laughs> So if you push the web sockets hard enough, they'll start to freeze. And you were always wondering like, what the hell are they frozen? What, where's the connection frozen now? And then it will catch up, maybe. So this is a problem that web, socket, web, web sockets inherited from uh, TCP, because at the end of the day, a web socket is just a TCP with some juice on top of it, like some custom headers. And uh, the reality is that it has the same problems as TCP. In particular, the head of line blocking problem. TCP will send, or WebSockets will send packets to your application only if the packets are ordered. So TCP is extremely paranoid about sending things out of order. That works in many scenarios. Many scenarios, this is great. This is an asset. This is something that you want. Many scenarios is not. When you have unreliable connections, it's actually a problem. 
Uh, let's stay away from the freeway. How about that? So that's why you cannot just use WebSockets for this. There was a draft. I read it. I said, this technology looks good. Google is push pushing for it. Zoom is looking into it. Let's just go for it. And then luckily for me, by the time I looked, there were already several frameworks that supported the protocol. So I was kind of lucky to just be able to use Quiche and Queen and, you know, there are all these great server implementations of, of Quick. I decided to use Queen because Queen is built uh, using async Rust. Uh, I just built a proof of, of concept using Linux to stream video to a server. Worked great, created a bunch of YouTube videos, great reception. I reached out to let's get rusty. Dude never replied, but I don't blame him. I mean, he's huge. Probably he gets like a shit ton of requests all the time. So I don't blame him or anything. So I decided to keep building on it. So it's just like a logical succession of steps. You build a one-off like video streaming app. Then you're like, okay, what can I do with this? That's when I created my RC car. So basically what it does is it streams real-time video from, from this little RC car to, to an Oculus headset. It's pretty neat, I think. To do, to do this little RC car, it was very annoying to use the goggles all the time. So imagine being like doing development with the goggles is just not feasible. So I ended up doing like a web app and then I will stream from the RC car to the web app. And you see it's like, like a logical succession of steps because the next logical steps is like, well, maybe I can create a video conferencing system, right? <laughs> I started to look into that and turns out that the browser does not natively support Quick. You could then just create a, a Quick connection and start creating and start sending streams and stuff. So what I had to do is to look at web transport libraries. So web transport is how the Google team intended Zoom to use the browser to stream. By that time, Chrome was the only browser to support web transport natively. Shortly after that, Chrome inherited it or got it for free because they are based off Chromium. Firefox rolled out their own implementation of web transport and shortly after Safari added their own implementation. So this graph here is kind of outdated, but pretty much this just looks like a web socket. So the, the only complication for me working in Rust was that I needed to have this exposed to, to Rust. And there's a project called Rust Wasenbeingen that allows you to do that. So I just find a PR where I expose the web API to Rust, hide it be, be behind a feature flag. I want to mention that the Rust wasn't binding maintainers were very good. They helped me to shape up my code and we shipped it. The next challenge was the server side, because as I mentioned initially, web transport is built on Queen. So you do need to do some work, some customization, send some headers over to promote a Queen connection to a web transport connection. Uh, there was no public server. Probably those guys have all the technology, but actually this is a great segue for the infamous Python project called, I think it's called Quick.io, Async Quick, something about Quick and something about Python. The dude runs it like a little emperor. And back in the day, this was the only working web transport server implementation out there. This is why I was considering using it. I decided to not get near Python like with a freaking pole. Hi. <laughs> What's that? This? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing in particular. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You guys care. take care. <laughs> I was still missing the server side piece of web transport. God damn it. It was such a pain in the ass. At work, we needed web transport for our different project. Gave the project to a guy. I said, dude, maybe you can like create the open source, the first open source version of web transport for, for Rust. Here are all these building blocks. Here's this Python piece of crap code that kind of works. You can use it as a foundation. So with the, you know, with the standard or the draft for the standard, Plus the browser implementation, I figured that he will have enough, but this dude was terrible. This dude didn't get anything done. This dude rather adding OpenCV to detect faces on, the, on a video, like on a live video on the browser, 
than doing the thing I asked for. I was pretty frustrated. Maybe now he's better, hopefully. I think it was like the winter of, I don't know, some miserable min winter up here in Michigan. And I decided to just put it on myself to get it down. I found that the H3 crate already had a, an issue filed requesting web transport support. I forked it, creating a, created a PR, and here's the first video where I show that I have like a working implementation. So I think it's using the datagrams API. There you go. So I'm opening a connection and then uh, it's like an echo server. So I'm sending a message and I get back uh, a response. It was April, so it was not the dead of winter. It was right after the winter. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is basically the first proof of concept where I was able to have a browser written in ROS with my bindings talking to an H3 fork that had web transport. It was pretty exciting. And uh, it was pretty tough, pretty tough because the browser does not give you very good de debug tools, to be honest with you. So I had to use a lot of Wireshark. I had to spend long nights trying to understand why it seemed like the browser connected to my server, but then it will shortly disconnect. And then between that and the um, Python implementation from this jerk over here, I was able to <laughs> piece the two together. I want to mention the role of Lilo Roberts. So Lilo Roberts is a developer out of Europe. I, th I believe either Sweden or Denmark. Like I got it to work. I got the thing to connect. Lilo made it nice, <laughs> all right? And Lilo took on the job of like properly integrating the web transport with the existing HTTP3 server. She crushed it. And here's where I want to emphasize the value of open source. Open source is a multiplying factor. You get to know the brightest and the smartest people out there. You get to know the best version of themselves because they don't do it for money. It's not a job. They do it because they love development. They love coding. So I was lucky to pair with, with her. We crushed it, got it merged. Finally, I integrated that stuff into my teleconferencing system. And here you see me with long hair. So it's been, it's been a while. <laughs> and I'm in my sister's bedroom in Mexico. And this, I think it's one of the first calls where I had two tabs open and I'm literally calling myself. You can see that I'm running the server locally. And I was just so happy to be able to say, yeah, this is super low latency and I'm able to have a conversation with myself. Super fun. I didn't even have audio yet. <laughs> there are no buttons or options. It's just like bare bones video streaming. But I was, I was thrilled. So I packaged everything up, put it on GitHub, shared the post on Reddit, I believe. <laughs> Guys, most of my posts are just downvoted. That's the reality. But this post in particular did fine. I received a lot of feedback. Lots of contributors started to show up because it seems like this was a common problem that pre that people had, like just audio and video streaming in the world, I guess, with Rust. Now I want to share with you some of the open source I put out in the web transport space. So the first one is this U web transport crate that allows you to integrate your U application with web transport. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? And what I love about this is the message by passing nature of the system. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you are familiar with uh, JavaScript, when you sent or received, when you received a message over WebSockets, you have a callback that gets triggered. But in you, we like to use message passing. I mean, we can also do the, the callback pattern, but I like this pattern better on message. So I really like the fact that uh, I integrated with the message passing uh, system that you provides. It makes it very asynchronous and it's hard to get race conditions when you use message passing. Because the one thing about message passing in, in you is that you know that at any point, any single component will process one message at the, at the time. So there are no weird race conditions and, and stuff like that. And it just makes it very clean for me. I realized that Leptos is like the cool kid in the block these days. So to that effect, I also created a, a Leptos um, crate. 
and instead of using message passing, it uses signals. And I'm going to tell you how, why I built it the way I did. It's a very opinionated way of using web transport, and it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I stand behind it. So basically, what it's very opinionated about my, my demo is that I do not like to have a single stream and like continue appending to the single to that single stream over and over. What I encourage with this framework is so that when people want to send something, they most likely have to open a new stream and send whatever they want to send. And this is to take advantage of this multiplex channel nature. I don't want people to create a few channels and hold hold on to them through a via like some reference for a long time. I want people to keep calling these methods whenever whenever they want to send a datagram well datagrams are connectionless and they are not a stream when they want whenever they want to send data they should open a unidirectional stream right then that's what i want to encourage and that's why i built it the way i did to be the best way to demo what i built is just to try using the teleconferencing system so here i have two in two peers that joined using different usernames right now i don't have oath and all that because i i i want to get the technology right before adding you know all the authentication and all that stuff here we have two peers i do get a i do get a kick out of how fast and how low latency these things are let's let's measure it together so if you compare the clock on my high resolution camera from the video feeds you should be able to measure latency so where, where are we i don't know it's 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 too tight i cannot tell if there's any latency here there is but it's sub 100 milliseconds or something it's extremely extremely low latency to be honest with you we are on our little video call just having fun talking to ourselves so let's bring up someone else it's more fun to talk to others so i connected to my little rc car yeah so i have my rc car over here i ssh to it and we are going to start a service that it makes the camera stream and it's going to stream to our to our conference what do you know yes so now this proves that we can connect any device any device any device to our conferencing system and to me that's truly truly powerful and good luck trying to do that with Google Meets. I guess you could run Google Meets on a Raspberry Pi, but you get what I'm saying. This, in my opinion, this really gets you freedom. It really gets you independence and you can build robotics projects. You can build all sorts of projects with this system. So my vision for this system, videocall.rs, is that roboticists, people in the healthcare industry, you know, all over the world, Whenever they want to add live streaming to their system, they will just drop this in their system and just use it. It just works out of the box. Maybe they have to write some code to get images into the system. Like I had to write code to get Linux images into the system using the video for Linux driver, something like that. But yeah, that's my ambition. That's, let's see if I can pull it off. This Linux daemon is open source as well, so go nuts with it. I heard that you guys are going to a resort near the Great Wall or something, so I hope you have a blast. I'm so jealous, I wish I could be there. But yeah, this is what I built, this is what I do. Hit me up on LinkedIn or GitHub, let's connect. You guys have a great time, ciao.